This episode of Grip Tips has been brought to you by M Squared Studio, and if you'd like to help out the channel, you can visit my Patreon page. I'll leave a link in the description below. We're back. We're back. I'm Dave Donaldson. Welcome back to Grip Tips. In part one of my Joker series, we taught you guys how to take the unit out of the case and get it set up properly on set. Uh, in part two, we taught you guys how to change the globe. Today's episode is going to be kind of short, but that's because I want to show you guys just a couple of accessories that you can actually use with K5600's Joker unit. And I personally feel that this is where this light shines. I really just said that. First up is the soft tube. This sits in front of the beamer like the lenses do, and you don't want to place it in the spot that the scrims do as they just simply won't work. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people who think that that's where it goes, and clearly it doesn't. And it's literally that simple to set up, and now you have a soft linear source of light that you could throw overhead or twist in any direction. And here's just kind of a quick example of exactly what that looks like. And now we will move on to a Shamira softbox, and I'm not going to go into how to disassemble the light to put on a speed ring, as we kind of covered that in part two. But once the light is stripped down to just the globe, a Shamira speed ring can be placed on it with the slots lined up for mounting. As you can see, this isn't the typical speed ring as it's specifically designed to fit the Joker. So just take a note of what this looks like because almost anything else will give you a hot spot in the middle of your softbox. Then you can go into mounting the poles into the speed ring, which if you've ever built any type of softbox, it's the same type of process with all four sides for the poles. Use your diffusion of choice on the inside of the softbox. And here you can kind of see what the softbox is doing as I grind my teeth. I really don't know why I'm doing that. So we have different lenses, we have a soft tube, we have a soft box, uh, and there are other accessories that I'm not covering in this episode that can go onto a Joker fixture, but this next one, I think everybody can agree they love the most. Uh, it's also known as the Joe Lico setup, J-O-L-E-K-O. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're taking the head and we're turning it into a Source 4 Lico light. So if a DP or a cinematographer asks you to build an 800 Joe Lico, this is what they're talking about. Starting off with the Joker completely stripped down to just the globe, we'll need to attach this extension to the globe. And it's just a two-prong extension. Whenever you go to rent this unit or if you buy this unit, this will come with the Joe Lico setup. Uh, it's just a two-prong extension, like I said. And the rental house was generous enough this time to give me two clean gloves. Clean gloves around any globe really, really important, as I said in uh, part two. First, we'll remove the globe from the head unit like I showed in the last episode, then attach the globe to the extension, which is really simple by lining up the male and female ends and just squeeze or push them together and push both of them back into the head. Now, a happy mistake I made while shooting this was that you should make sure to back off the screws closest to the globe. The lip of the globe won't push past the screws if you don't do that and therefore the globe can't see properly in the head. So you'll grab a flathead screwdriver and back those screws off until the lip of the globe clears the screws and pushes all the way back into the head unit. Now a little side note, it might actually be easier to take the extension, push it in the head first, and then take the globe and then push that into the extension. Um, I, don't, I don't know why I did that that way instead of the B-roll, but maybe that's the way that you would prefer to do it. There's really no wrong way to do it. Uh, just make sure that you're gonna be using alcohol wipes to clean the globe after you're done. So now that we've gotten that far, with the Bug of Beam Lico housing, insert the globe and the head unit into the Lico housing and line up the screws with the screw slots to make sure that the head unit can securely fasten to the Lico housing and begin tightening the screws you just backed off earlier along with the obvious one thumb knob as well. And now this beautiful beast, which will obviously not use the smaller yoke anymore because it's too small and it'll be too front heavy, but uses the yoke attached to the Lico to mount to whatever you need. And from there, it's just basic assembly like any other Source 4 Lico by using any of the lenses that you choose for focusing your beam. And at this point, you can also use gobos so that you can say have Venetian blind patterns or what, really whatever gobo pattern you're looking for. And in this example, you can see I have a 300D bouncing into a bead board to give me some fill on my face. And if you look in the hallway, way back there off to the left, I have the Joe Lico throwing the Venetian blind pattern gobo behind me. When it comes to your g and &E rental house needs, M Squared Studio is not only that, but they're also an insert stage located in Parsippany, New Jersey. Within the Manhattan zone in just 30 minutes from Midtown, the studio offers discounted or free delivery rates for your production. If you have any questions about what you see in today's episode, or maybe you're looking for a rental quote, you can feel free to reach out to them at www.msquaredstudio.tv. You can also check out their Instagram page as they're consistently loading content on there to show you what their daily activities are. 
Uh, also, with Grip Tips, if you mention Grip Tips when you're getting a quote, they'll give you 20% off. And this is only going on for the next six months, so make sure to take advantage of that. But sadly, that is all that I have for you guys today. If you like today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You can also follow me on my Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, buy a t-shirt, and we'll see you next time right here on Grip Tips.